This is a Boardwalk Audio podcast. I just drink wine. Well, hello and welcome to The Wine Situation. Where the situation is, is uh, still a pandemic, and so there's a lot of drinking alone, and I, L or Ellen, whichever, Clifford, am here to be your drinking friend. I'm here to entertain you. I don't know why I sang that. That was terrible. Please forgive me. Uh, I'm mixing things up again uh, this week. I am going to normally, I either, I'm just, it's just me talking or I'm talking and then I do a final five. But then last week I actually did a full on interview because we were doing a vertical tasting. Well, this week, my final five guest, Theodora Lee of Theopolis Vineyards, we had a great conversation, but the thing is, I felt, well, I've had her wine on the podcast before. You can learn, listen to me taste some of her wine on episode 4.12 entitled Wine On. I review her wine and talk a lot about the vineyards and her, like, she's such a cool woman. So I was like, oh, I'm going to feel weird if I actually, like, drink uh, uh, someone else's wine on this episode before introducing her. That just felt off to me, but... She talked a little bit about cocktails in our interview, so what I'm going to do is I am going to just jump right in and give you the conversation I had with her. It's pretty much uncut, so there's going to be some some awkward talk about like getting COVID shots and stuff at the top, but then we get into the final five, learn all about what she likes to eat, what she likes to drink, and she's going to mention a couple cocktails, and I'm not going to tell you which one I'm going to make, but then after that interview. It'll be back to just me, and I will be trying out one of the cocktails she mentions and, uh, you know, telling you a little bit about the spirits that she's using. So, yeah, that's that's the deal with this week's episode. I would be really curious to hear how, how y'all are liking it. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Normally, the episodes are a little different than this, and also, if you're wondering why you should trust me, I got a diploma from the W said I'm a certified SOM, I write for Venice Intellectual, blah, 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 blah. I don't know everything. Good God, do I not know everything? I don't know enough, guys. But I, I think I know enough to hopefully, you know, bring a little enlightenment and enjoyment to your drinking practice. And, you know, it is, it is a practice, guys. I don't know why I'm being like that. Okay, Um. anyway, just, you know... Pour yourself a drink. It can be tea. I don't care. Whatever you whatever you like to to imbibe. Maybe you need a snack. Do you need make some popcorn? Just make some popcorn, chill on the couch, have a drink too if you want it. You do you. And please inter uh, please please interview. Please enjoy this interview with Theo, aka Theodore Lee of Theopolis Vineyards. Oh, just busy, busy, busy. I, you know, while I was waiting, I was just working on a brief. Uh, uh, got our second COVID test. I take care of my 94 year old mother, so I'm actually oh my in Dallas. And oh. so we had our COVID test yesterday, and then uh, the city, which is a suburb of Dallas, um, actually is testing a program with the Texas National Guard where they will come to your home and give you a uh, vaccine. And, 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 you know, I have 24-7 care for my 94-year-old mother after she was hospitalized this summer. And so oh, wow. the National Guard and the fire people came to give my mother's caregiver uh, uh, the first vaccine check um, um, uh, today. So it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Oh, um, well, I- Glad you guys. But I I was able uh, to get mine with her. Uh, We had our first one in January, and I'm here every three weeks. So um, with the with the Pfizer one, it's every you have to get the second one 21 days later. So that was we actually got it 22 days later, which was yesterday. But they they Ah. wanted around that. There's a little flexibility. So are you in California? Yeah, I'm in I'm in Los Angeles, so um, okay. I really appreciate yeah, well, you taking the taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, I was just down in South Southern California last week. I was actually in Palm Desert. 
I had a couple of depositions um, in the San Fernando Valley, and then I headed over to Palm Desert where it was 82 degrees for the weekend. <laughs> so good for you, and it's it's 20 here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well. Uh, right, so I'm taking lots of vitamin C not to get sick because between – L.A., which was like 70, Palm Desert, which was like 82, going back to Northern California, where it was like 50, coming here <laughs> on Monday night, uh, where it was like maybe 40, to today it dropped to 20, and oh my gosh. it's supposed to be on Monday. So <laughs> Your poor body is like, probably does not know what hit it. <laughs> I know, and then um, you add the, the you add the second COVID vaccine, which they say oh is supposed to have, uh, you know, headaches and chills and things. But fortunately, oh. knock on wood, I have not had any of those symptoms. I have a cousin that went to the emergency room uh, and negative reaction to her COVID vaccine. Oh, wow. So it, wow. I'm just happy my mother and I are strong women. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> We need you. We need you. We need both you and our wine, your wine in our lives. So. <laughs> um, Very well. Well, I know you didn't call to talk about the vaccine, but uh, oh, I am. But no, I'm so thrilled that you got it, though. That's good news. <laughs> I am. I, I went to social media, and I'm trying to encourage everyone to get it. And, and I'm going to later today, tonight, I don't do that until late, late, late times at night because my mm -hmm. day job keeps me busy. <laughs> cool. Well, so, so I just have five uh five fun questions about food and wine in your life. So if if you're ready, we can we can jump right into it. Go right into it. All right. Question number 1 is just uh what you drinking these days? What are you what are you into? Well, I have to tell you, I am really into my first blend. Um, I have never done a, a a blend. I all of the wines that I've always produced, you know, the Petit Syrah, the Pinot Noir, mm. the Symphony Rosé of Petit Syrah are all a hundred percent Petit, a hundred percent Pinot. Yeah. Well, and if I, I haven't mentioned it, I'm, I'm a huge fan of your wine. <laughs> oh well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have to tell you that. Um, I bottled this blend in December. It is a Rhone blend, R-H-O-N, uh, but it's not the one that everyone thinks of that has Grenache, Syrah, and Mouvedre. That's called the, um, oh, God, they have a acronym for it. The GSM? It. <laughs> GSM. It's not a GSM. Because I didn't want to do a GSM. I wanted to do a Theo blend, okay? Ah, so cool. it's called it's called Theopatra's Cuve Cerise. And it hmm. just got 90 points from wine enthusiasts. And I will tell you, I am loving it. And I have to tell you that <laughs> I tell my wine daughter, because it's just us uh, really doing the business. I have a, you know, a wine um uh, uh, a vineyard manager and a consulting winemaker, but it's just us. Once it gets in the bottle, it's just mm -hmm. the two of us. Packing and oh, wow. shipping. So it is a wonderful uh, a blend of my petite Syrah, uh, Syrah, and Mouvedre, Mouvedre, which I'm learning how to pronounce, and I un <laughs> unfortunately got braced last month. As an adult, so having braces, I oh my feel gosh. like I'm really weirdly. And when I have to take plaintiff's depositions or go to court, I have to uh, just remind myself that I am okay, but it's, it's, it's harder to take braces. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I'm cool. Simply, well, I – oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so that was a oh. long way of answering. Question. I said that was a long way of answering your question, but that's what I'm sipping. But we tease ourselves that we have to put it away because it would be <laughs> like a 
drug dealer, you know, taking their own drugs. You can't <laughs> drink it. So, uh, Aww. <laughs> Well, I will I mean, look forward to trying that when it's when it's on the market. <laughs> um, actually, on the market, I'm running a Valentine's Day sale that includes oh. the three new releases. It includes the Theopatra Cuvée Cerise, which is the red blend. It includes Theopatra's Cuvée Blanc, which is 100% Chardonnay, but because TTB... I want it, and, and, you know, Symphony is my, my signature white wine, but the Cuvée Blanc, uh, I think I'm going to have to do it on a regular basis. So instead of uh, of, of actually putting the, the variety in the label, we just call it Theopatra's Cuvée Blanc, a white wine, California, uh, because we're going to be bottling another uh, Chardonnay, but the 2019 vintage. So that plus the 2018 Petit Sra that we bottled. So all of those were bottled at the end of last year. Uh, and they are on sale, including free shipping right now. Uh-huh. And so I'm going to have to get into that. <laughs> $100 is a pretty good deal. I mean, the free shipping, but you're in L.A., so it doesn't cost you much to ship. But the people on the East Coast are just eating it up. Oh, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Okay, um, so question number two is a, what is either a favorite pairing or an unusual pairing that you've enjoyed? And it can be any kind of food, any kind of drink. Well, um, I like oxtails. <laughs> oxtails? Uh, oxtails, beef oxtails. Oh. And my- my mother is, you know, like I said, is 90, 94 years old, and she says, you know, oxtails uh, used to be something that we had to had to uh, uh, eat because that was the end of the the, the beef. Uh, mm-hmm. But with with it now, it is a <laughs> delicacy, uh, and I have to tell you, I love the oxtails with the 2017 or 2018 Petit Rock. I mean, it is just, you know, it, it's a big, hearty dish. Over some creamy polenta, mm, you can't get mm-hmm. better than that. Sounds like good winter food. That's exactly right. Being cold as it is, I'm going <laughs> to see if they have sales. Uh, I've got to go shopping yesterday. It was so much. It was so cold and 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 wet. Uh, there was, you know, it was it was ice on the ground. So I'm going to go shopping uh, after we get off of this phone. But I really love the petite sera with braised oxtails. Oh my god! And, <laughs> and polenta, creamy Italian polenta and green beans, honey. <laughs> it it it. it, it. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, well, question number three is another pairing question, and it's funny that you're in Texas right now because when I was uh, reading reading up on you before I, <laughs> I uh, called for the interview, I heard saw that you were from Texas, and I, I grew up going to Texas because I had family down there, and I would always look forward to eating Tex-Mex. Um, so my uh, next question was if you're eating – well, we would look forward to Tex-Mex and to Texas barbecue. So I was wondering if you have favorite things to drink when you're enjoying either one of those things. Well, I had some great Tex-Mex last night, uh, which was wonderful. Um, And I would say Chardonnay with with, with shrimp tacos. Okay. Oh, it was wonderful. Very cool. I I would not have liked Chardonnay. Wouldn't be the first thing I would think of. But now I need some tacos and some Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked for me. It it, it worked nice. for me. Um, it it is just it. You know, Chardonnay is a pretty full body. Uh, I don't really like wimpy wine, so you'll have <laughs> to understand. 
So the the text mess and all the flavors really go well. And I will tell you, I didn't have any, but 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 it also the shrimp tacos go very well with my symphony. Uh, I don't know if you've had the symphony. I have, and it's a beautiful wine. It really accentuates the spiciness of the tacos. But I, you know, I I would, uh, I love uh, Chardonnay, and I can tell you that last night that worked very well for me. Excellent. Um, Okay, question number four is uh, what do you enjoy, and it can be alcoholic or not, what what sort of beverages are you into if it's not wine? Well, my favorite... Let me uh, let me put it like this. Because it's cold, <laughs> favorite winter drink is something called the beautiful. The beautiful. Are you familiar with the? No, but I want to be. <laughs> Tell me about it. Grand Marnier and <laughs> uh, cognac. Ooh, that does sound beautiful. <laughs> That's what mine is, okay? I'm going to have to make sure that I'm not specifically uh, saying something wrong because that's what I've been drinking during the winter. Very cool. Um, Okay, well, so the last question is, um, and this could be related. Oh, sorry, go ahead. And I part because... uh, Grand Marnier uh, and and cognac are my favorite winter drink when I'm not drinking wine. My favorite summer cocktail ah. is vodka, and of course, uh, I love our Texas vodka. Uh, ah. And I like a club soda with a lot. Sounds refreshing. Um... I don't know that I've – is Deep Eddie, is that a Texas vodka? I'm like, I don't know that I've had much Texas vodka. <laughs> what is the most fa- – what is the – you 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 spend how much time in Texas? Um. Well, growing up, we would go down there once or twice a year to visit, like, grandparents and aunts and uncles. Uh, so – um, but so a lot of my time yeah, in Texas part? was before I could drink. Um, Georgetown, just outside Austin. Well, the best vodka sold in America is called Tito's. Oh, vodka. oh, of course, yes. <laughs> it, is, it, it is distilled in Austin, Texas, and that's where I went to law school. And Tito's oh. vodka, soda with lime, is just refreshing in the summer because I have to drink whatever I'm feeling. So right yeah. now, the beautiful. Is what I'm feeling, but as soon as the sun comes up, uh, <laughs> I'll be uh, <laughs> I'll be going back to the beautiful. I mean, I'll be going nice. to the vodka. Nice. <laughs> um, well, our last question, which is the same question I've been asking us since the dawn of the show, which can be related to food and wine or not, which just uh, what's what's bringing you joy these days. What is bringing me joy are virtual wine tastings, actually. Oh, <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, I mean, they are a way to connect with people virtually, bring pleasure to people's lives, because I really enjoy being in the beverage in- industry because I specialize in pleasure in the bottle. Uh, Mm -hmm. And with COVID and people stuck at home, it is a way to add value to people's lives. And when I give to others, it makes me very happy. I love it. I love it. Well, um, before we uh, wrap up, do you want to tell people where where they can find you, where they can find your wine? Um, well, they can find my wines at theopolisvineyards.com. Uh, for those in the L.A. area, um, my wines are also at a uh, couple of places in 
LA. Um, I Alta Adams is a wine bar uh, that has my wines, uh, the Petite and the and the Pinot. Uh, but the best place is theoplandsvineyards.com. Excellent. I will I will be there looking to to find that new blend of yours. <laughs> Um, yes, on the page, you, if you go to the to, to the home page, uh, you will see the Valentine's Day special, or you can just go to the, the the wine list and see that new special, and it is great. In fact, I'm so pleased because the entire special are 90 plus wine uh, enthusiasts. The, the 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 Cuvée Cerise, the Cuvée Blanc, just won 90 points. I got an email this week, and the 96 points, the highest score ever given a petite, was oh, given wow. to the 2018. The Congratulations. Raw. So I'm really, in addition to doing virtual wine tastings, getting 96 points is making me very happy, too. <laughs> awesome. Very yeah. congratulations and well-deserved. Um Thank you Thank so much you. for doing this. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I will look forward to uh, drinking your wine and continuing to, you know, maybe I'll catch you on one of those vir- uh, virtual tastings one of these days. Great. And and if if you could let her, uh, the Mendo lady know when this might uh, come out, let me, you know, I would love to pick it up and put it out on social media. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I mean, it will probably, this will probably be, be on next week's episode, but I, I will let Tiziano know. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank right. you for taking, thank you. Uh, taking an and, and salute. Okay, thank <laughs> salute. you very much. Bye. Okay. Well, that was a good time, wasn't it? I had such a lovely time getting to know Theo. Uh, So she talked about a couple things, one being a a vodka drink and the other being the beautiful. And because, you know, I'm really feeling myself, I figured, eh, let's try out the beautiful. Also, I don't think I have like the other stuff she was gonna put with the vodka. So there's that factor too. And like, thirdly, uh. Oh, yeah, thirdly, <laughs> I just realized I'm, I'm sitting here looking at my bar cart. Okay, so I don't have any cognac, but I do have Grand Marnier, and I do have Armagnac, which is also a brandy, much like cognac. So what's the difference between cognac and Armagnac? Well, they are both uh, have to come from different regions in France. They can use uh, different grapes, but like I think they both, I think they both mostly these days use a lot of Mi Blanc, that's U-G-L-I space B-L-A-N-C. And uh, usually, I mean, well, a cognac has to be double distilled in a copper pot. And Armagnac is typically in a column still. This is probably all getting more technical than you want. Uh, Armagnacs are often thought of as being, I don't know, slightly less refined somehow than cognac. But I have a really nice one that I had gotten for an article I was writing. Um, from Ba Armagnac, it is the De Lord Napoleon, which means it was aged at least 10 years. Let's see what this one says. Uh, let's see. Slow, single slow at low temperature distillation to keep flavors and rich character and spirit, aging 10 years in oak barrels. So I, I thought this, when I tried it on its own, it was quite an elegant Armagnac, so I think it should be an okay uh, substitution for cognac. Now, Grand Marnier is actually based on cognac mixed with, like, an orange uh, bitter liqueur of some type. I'm probably getting those exact details wrong. I want to say the orange is, like, a Curaçao-based spirit. At any rate, uh, Grand Marnier, great fun, as is Armagnac. So, although, okay, so recipes I found for The Beautiful said it's also sometimes called the French Connection Number 2, Apparently, the regular French connection, you would replace the Grand Marnier with Amaretto. At any rate, uh, the recipes I found all called for equal parts of those, typically served in a snifter, which I don't have a big old brandy snifter, but I do have all all these other crazy glassware, and uh, apparently 
Um, I, I don't know. I, I think apparently like a burgundy glass would do about as well as a snifter. So I'm actually I'm going to use my Grozzle crew glass, which is made for burgundy, to make this cocktail in. I saw like one iteration of it saying that you could add a rock or rocks, I suppose, if you wanted. Um, but I, I think I'm going to try it just neat first. And yeah, apparently it's just equal parts, so bear with me. Let's see. Let's open up this Ba Armagnac. Ooh, that's heady. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one and a half ounces each. And then I'll taste it with y'all. Oh yeah, and also the recipes were like, oh just build it in the glass. Like don't worry about stirring. So I mean I might swirl it a little. This is all you'd think I'd never made a cocktail before. I just don't make that many uh neat cocktails uh neat being no no nothing in terms of um oh fuck <laughs> i just tried to take the the stopper out of the grand marnier and the cork is broken it's like one of those things where you just pull it out but now the cork is stuck i'm gonna pause and uh attend to this emergency hold on guys Okay, emergency diverted. I just used a regular um, wine opener. Oh, and now people are knocking at my door. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I That was Amazon Prime sending me my groceries way earlier than it looked like they were going to arrive, which, you know, I can't complain. There's, You're hearing me now putting away ice cream. I'm sorry, this is like probably the most chaotic episode you have ever listened to of this podcast, but, you know. It's uh, pandemic time, so let's roll with the punches. Okay, so this Grand Marnier, I don't know why the, I mean, it's, it's nearing the end of this bottle. Don't know why part of the cork stuck in it. God, I love the smell of, like, I'm not the biggest orange juice person or even the biggest orange eater, but I really, I enjoy orange flavored spirits quite a bit. Okay, here we go. All right, I now have equal parts. Ba Armagnac, um, Napoleon Armagnac, and Grand Marnier in my glass. It looks a delightful, tawny color. Let me cheers ya. Woo! Oh, that's nice. Super silky. The orange obviously sings. You get a lot of the, like, vanilla, I think, off the Armagnac. Mmm. But I will tell you, there's quite an alcoholic burn when I, especially coming out of this uh, burgundy glass. So, you know, while, while I've got you guys with me, let's... I'm going to put one small rock in it. I hope this isn't like a travesty to be doing. And I know everyone else in the rest of the country right now, the day I'm recording this is like freezing cold, but it's like pretty... Ooh, I hope that was okay for the glass. Um, whew, okay. So I'm hoping this will just like dilute the alcohol just a little bit and add like a little bit of a chill. Ah, ooh, you get a lot of like cinnamon and clove. This is super fun, guys. Oh yeah, woo! Still packing a punch, but like really elegant drink. And I could see this being the perfect like sit down by the fireside and have yourself a nice little a nice little the beautiful and then you can feel beautiful okay so uh this was an unconventional episode thank you all for bearing with me i hope you liked it i'd love if you want to you know rate review say good things on itunes find me on the instagram i'm at ellen clifford or at the wine situation tell me what you've been up to tell you t tell you tell me what you think of these different formats i've been doing and uh, I'll talk to y'all next week. Cheers. Glass! I just drink wine. wine. I don't fuck with my PA. I just drink wine. I don't fuck with Minute Maid. I just drink wine. I don't fuck with Coffee Maid. I just drink wine. Give me red, white, or say, Don't touch me, motherfucker. I'm a Somaliite. <laughs> has
been a Boardwalk Audio podcast. For more information and shows, visit BoardwalkAudio.com. Don't forget to rate and subscribe now. Acast powers some of the world's best podcasts. Here's a show we recommend. I'm Teresa Caputo, and I am dying to tell you about my new podcast, Hey Spirit. Most of you might know me as the Long Island Medium. Why do people even call me that? Well, I talk to the dead. Oh, he is funny <laughs> as sh- He literally just said, Teresa, he's a better husband because of me. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Through this podcast, I'm going to connect guests with the souls of their departed loved ones and give them the peace that they've been searching for. I got to catch up with my friend, Kim Kardashian West. Every brunch, we have this Armenian bishi that totally brings our dad into the mix. Today, I had the pleasure of sharing my gift with Nathan Lane. I am so super excited for you guys to hear and be a part of Hey Spirit. Please subscribe wherever you listen. ACAST, A-cast, A-cast recommends. recommends.